Boo! It's your Halloween special again. Just like the last year. And the year before that. And before that. Because basically it's now become an annual tradition. And this year, once again, we're going to be talking about vampires. Well, like, real life vampires. Because this one is a little bit creepy and actually does exist in a lot of different countries. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Happy Halloween. Hope you got enough candy for tonight to survive this ordeal. Because today we're going to be discussing a somewhat unnerving creature. A creature whose name sounds like it was pulled straight from the Halloween horror movie. A vampire moth. But I guess forget the capes, forget the fangs, and maybe the garlic. But don't forget the sun, because this particular moth, just like the vampires, is not particularly fond of it. Except, as always, this is not some kind of folklore or some kind of science fiction. This is real biology. We're discussing the genus Calyptra. A number of very specific moths that love to eat fruit, but they do this in a very unique way. And you can see this way in this video by the Entomological Society of America. They basically pierce the fruit with what's known as proboscis. A tiny straw that some of the insects usually contain that allows them to drink the sap either from the fruit, from the tree, from the seeds, or from somewhere else. And it's that something else that we're going to be discussing today, because at least some of the species of this moth, and specifically Calyptra talictri, exhibits a somewhat rare and somewhat fascinating behavior, with this particular moth developing the ability to pierce the skin of vertebrates, including humans, to drink blood. So, ha ha ha. This is a vampire story after all. And here the scientific reality is actually pretty interesting, because this is a very unique behavior and is a clear-cut case of evolution driven by crucial nutrient deficiency, making this particular moth an indispensable subject for scientists trying to understand how complex feeding habits, such as for example blood sucking, seems to evolve. And by the way, we actually discussed something very similar a few years back when we discussed the blood sucking birds. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. But I guess let's investigate what's really happening here and what we know about this unusual insect and of course why this particular moth seems to have developed this ability. And well at first glance when you look at this, this is really just your regular moth. Earthy in color, somewhat medium in size and with a wingspan of about 2 inches or 45 millimeters. Though some members have been known to grow much larger up to about 72 millimeters. So that's about this big. And based on what we know about it, the majority of its life is spent performing a much less dramatic activity. And you actually just saw that a few seconds ago. It loves fruit. Strawberries, apples, anything. As a matter of fact, this moth and a lot of its ancestors, actually all of the Calyptra genus, are excellent fruit feeders. They love consuming soft fruits like peaches, plums, and various citruses, and can usually be found feeding on the trees containing these fruits. But in this case, this particular species, Calyptra thalic tree, seems to be native to a relatively large area in the Old World, ranging from Japan and Korea all the way to Urals in the Southern Europe. And me living in Korea right now, um, I basically started to close my windows now because, nope, I'm not letting this one inside ever. But it has been migrating to a lot of other locations, including Finland in 2000 and even Sweden in 2008. So, you know, if you're in North Europe, you may want to watch this video because you might want to know what's going to happen to you soon. And that's because based on what we know about this particular moth, it basically lives a kind of a dual lifestyle. And so yeah, it has its own kind of a masquerade going on here. It appears normal by day and turns into something sinister at night. And so when there are no more fruits to pierce, it transitions into its secondary mode. It becomes a blood drinker. And so its remarkable mouth part, known as proboscis, becomes a very important sucking tool that can now perform its secondary task. Now the thing is, for most of these moths, their proboscis is normally pretty soft, coiled, and is used for either sipping nectar or sometimes for piercing some of the softer fruit, but not for something much harder. Yet this particular species developed a proboscis that was very hard. It's almost like a needle. And so because this is a modified proboscis and resembles a needle or even a fang, and is actually even armed with these very sharp barbed hooks, it can now be used to pierce body parts. And even from animals with very hard skin. Which is basically what they've been caught doing many times. Now in this case this was a scientist's finger, so this was actually on purpose, but they have been caught to accidentally feed on humans here and there, or they usually prefer larger animals. And when they do feed on blood, it's generally facultative. Or basically it's an optional behavior. And interestingly enough, they do it in exactly the same way. 
they rock their head back and forth, using their proboscis as a kind of a drill to dig inside the skin. They then deploy these internal hooks to anchor the proboscis firmly inside and start sucking the blood out, just like they would with a typical fruit sap. And the duration of this bizarre meal can be surprisingly long. Some of these moths have been observed sucking blood for up to 20 minutes. I guess they really like it that much. Well, in one case, it was even recorded to be 50 minutes. And I'm assuming in this case, this was on someone that fell asleep. And just imagine waking up to something like this in the middle of the night. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be keeping my windows closed from now on. But this is obviously not the only thing we know about them. As a matter of fact, there's another really interesting tidbit. For some reason, this is only a male thing. This unusual biological adaptation seems to only affect male moths and not the females, which usually prefer fruit juice and nectar. And this was actually a really important discovery because this told scientists that in this case, the blood meal wasn't about the moth's personal survival, it actually seemed to be about reproduction and sexual selection. And so that potentially explains why they even do this, because once again, this is not actually required, this seems to be an optional behavior. And so right now, the leading hypothesis is that males seem to suck blood primarily to acquire salt or sodium. And that's because sodium is vital and male moths usually use it as a kind of a sexual gift. Which makes the story just so much more interesting. Basically here we have a vampire gifting blood to its loved ones. Oh hey, I can also reuse this video for the Valentine's Day. And so here during mating, the male passes this acquired salt along with other amino acids and nutrients to the female companion. Although I guess the next question is, okay, why though? That's one salty gift, you know? Well, it turns out that it's because of offspring. The larva of this particular moth that usually feeds on the leaves of plants like Talictrum, also referred to as the meadow rue, provides only a limited diet. In this case, these particular leaves seem to be rich in carbohydrates but extremely poor in sodium. And so by providing female a boost of salt, the male seems to directly contribute to the survival and the fitness of the young larva, and specifically in this environment where salt seems to be scarce, and potentially lacks a lot of additional nutrients. And so in this case, this particular behavior seems to provide an evolutionary advantage for certain species of this moth. And so this makes this particular moth not really a vampire monster, as much as a, I guess, caring father. Just making sure that his children get enough salt and nutrients to survive. Although once again, this is maybe just a hypothesis for now. For all we know, these guys are up to something entirely different. But this evolutionary path leading to this blood feeding is a key area of study for entomologists. Specifically, the question here is, how did a fruit eater develop a taste for human blood? Or I guess, other animal blood. And right now, scientists hypothesize a clear progression. First, some kind of a pre-adaptation. The ancestors of this moth were already accomplished fruit piercers. They had a very specialized proboscis and had all the tools required for penetration. And so the next thing that was required was some kind of a transition to skin piercing and of course blood feeding. And this is of course the second stage. This potentially evolved from the existing animal related behaviors, such as for example mud puddling. This is when a lot of moths aggregate on specific substances for various nutrients. And to be more exact, this mud puddling behavior, which mostly appears in butterflies, usually involves a lot of these bugs congregating to things like, for example, mud or even dung to try to extract as much nutrients from this particular element as possible. So this is actually a pretty well-known behavior for many butterflies and moths. And so this means that this particular moth didn't just suddenly start sucking blood, or I guess didn't just suddenly stop eating its orange and then decided to bite a buffalo, and instead very likely repurposed its proboscis through a very similar puddling behavior that involved multiple moths finding a new nutrient source inside someone's blood. And once one or two of these moths became successful at this, it very likely became an evolutionary advantage and then spread amongst the species. And the thing is, this transition has been observed firsthand. Dr. Jenner Fosaspel, who studied the species back in early 2000s, collected some of the very similar moths in a location where they were actually not known to feed on blood. So basically she found certain moths that were only known to feed on fruit. But just for funsies, she decided to suck her finger inside the vial containing this moth and within just minutes, it drilled into her skin and began feeding. And that's actually the picture you're seeing right here. And this was the first time ever this particular moth from this population was observed to drink blood. 
They've actually never done it before, despite the fact that this was a very similar species to the one where these vampire moths were very successful as blood drinkers. And that of course suggested that this moth seems to be on a slightly different evolutionary trajectory, very distinct from other populations. It was basically ready to adapt to new environments and new behaviors just because of this very strange evolutionary advantage. But this evolutionary advantage does not just stop at that nose or that proboscis. One of the most fascinating recent discoveries suggests that there's another previously unknown adaptation that seems to involve sense of smell. In a lot of studies, researchers observed that even within the Russian population that was previously not a blood drinker, and specifically all of these moths were only known to eat fruit, Scientists discovered that of the ones that chose to drink blood, there was actually a slightly different smell adaptation. And specifically out of 16 moths that were collected, only 3 chose to drink blood. And the ones that refused to drink blood seemed to be even repulsed by it. As a matter of fact, when offered blood, they tried to get away from it. And so here they wanted to find out what was this physical trait that made blood for some of these moths so appealing and for some other ones made them want to vomit because here we're still dealing with exactly the same species of moth. And the answer lay in their antenna, the moth's main organ for detecting scent. Here scientists discovered a kind of a dimorphism, or two distinct forms of these antenna, with the blood-sucking males having a reduced number of olfactory sensilla, or tiny little hairs that sense smell, compared to the non-blood-feeding males. And these very specific sensilla, referred to as sensilla coloconica, were also discovered to be sensitive to animal-related volatiles, such as, for example, ammonia. And so here this was a really intriguing discovery, presenting us with a new exciting conclusion. A reduction in these sensory organs, or these tiny hairs, seems to make the moth less sensitive to smells given off by animals. And so the moths that do become blood feeders are genetically predisposed to being less repelled by the sense of the vertebrate host. So in other words, we are more stinky for the ones that choose not to drink blood, and we don't smell as bad for the ones that become blood suckers. And this trait, a very dull sense of smell, then allows the males to successfully acquire extra salt, which potentially makes them just a little bit more evolutionarily successful when it comes to sexual selection. In other words, the salt-rich males, the ones who suck blood, seem to be more successful when it comes to reproduction, with their less sensitive blood-sucking traits being passed down to a lot more offspring, making this behavior more common and making these moths more successful overall, which would actually explain why suddenly they seem to start appearing in locations where they never existed or where similar moths were never actually blood drinkers at first. And so here this blood drinking seems to be a major evolutionary advantage, which makes this a super exciting story. Here this vampire moth is not just some kind of a spooky Halloween story, but here this is also a story of evolution in action. Here we see a specialized adaptation, specifically fruit piercing, paving the way for a completely new feeding behavior involving animal skin. And it's this tiny physical difference, or the reduced number of sensory organs on their antenna, that seems to drive the evolution by making certain moths more efficient. But luckily for us, even though they might bite you and might suck some of your blood, unlike mosquitoes, they do not actually spread any disease. They're not vectors for parasites or for viruses, and they're not threat to humans. They're just scary because they're vampires. Nevertheless though, Calyptra telictri reminds us that the complex tapestry of life is constantly being changed, and sometimes in very unexpected ways, for reasons we actually don't understand at first. And so in this case, even the strangest phenomena from the animal kingdom seem to be often driven by the simplest needs. In this case, it's the need for salt and specifically, salt for your children. So actually a pretty cool story when you think about it. But at least for now, that's all we know. I'm sure there are going to be more studies about this particular moth, and we'll probably learn a little bit more about them. But until we do, that's kind of all we know. Check out some of the previous videos, including the other vampire videos in the description below. Happy Halloween, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Okay, I'm done here. Time to go scare my neighbors now!